my YouTube friends. Ever feel like your face cam setup just isn't living up to its potential? You're not alone. Many of us struggle to get that professional look. Sure, you could easily create face cams right in OBS that look like this. But if you want something more professional and interesting like this, well, you can't do that in OBS. Now with all the fancy equipment and software out there, it's really easy to get overwhelmed. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create animated face cams like this that are gonna elevate your streaming or video content using simple, free tools that anyone can use. And by the way, if you don't like this shape or you don't like these borders or animations, don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to change those as well. By the end of this video, you're gonna be amazed at how easy it is to get that professional look without spending any money or a lot of time. So you know what? Let's get to it! Let's start with simple masks. There is a lot of software that you can use to create them really easily. All it is is a shape with an alpha background. Pixlr makes it really easy because it has so many preset shapes. So I'm gonna show you how that works. There are links in the description so you can check it out and follow along with me. That is the best way to learn. We're definitely gonna hit the easy button for our masks today. We're gonna use Pixlr and Pixlr E is what we're going to use. There is a link to this page in the description so that you can follow along and check it out. We're gonna just use this one right here and we're gonna create a new image. We're gonna go ahead and select the actual resolution of our live stream, in this case, 1920 by 1080. We do not want a background and we're gonna click create. Now we're gonna go over here to the shapes. We're gonna select that. We want our fill to be black and we're gonna select custom shape and there are plenty here that can serve as really, really cool masks. And you can use any single one of these. And I'm gonna just choose one and we're gonna create something cool from that. So we're gonna use this one right here. And then all we have to do is just drag over here to create our mask. And I'm gonna make it as big as possible to fill the entire screen. And I wanna make sure that it is perfectly centered. So there we go, we've got it perfectly centered. Now what I'm gonna do here is go over here to styles and I'm gonna select outline. We're gonna select the color, which is black. And we're gonna bump up the size of our outline so we can see it. Obviously, since we set the color to black, we can't see it. So we'll just change the color a little bit there so we can see how thick we want our outline to be. You can go super fat, you can go super thin. I think somewhere in the middle is probably good. That probably works for me. So I'm gonna go over here to fill and I'm going to unfill it. And there we go. So now we've got our outline. I'm gonna change this to black and there we go. So now I'm gonna control C, control V and we just pasted another one on here. I'm gonna go ahead and hide the top one. I'm gonna go ahead and change this around. So I'm gonna select fill select the black click ok gonna go to styles i'm gonna turn off our outline and then i'm gonna go ahead and shrink this down and center it so we get the x we want it perfectly centered and there we go and now all we have to do is turn this one on and you can see what we get so we can definitely stretch it out a little bit if we want to fill in some of the side space so that's what i'm going to do I'm going to grab the corner and hold down the shift key and stretch this out a little bit over here on the side. And then I'm going to hide this and make sure that it's perfectly centered. And there we go. So now I think we've got the actual outline that we're looking for. It's absolutely perfect. Now, in this case, the outline is going to be our animation and the center part is going to be our face cam. And I think I want a little bit thicker lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bump those up a little bit more like that. So now we wanna save this out in two different ways. We're gonna save our outline here, which is going to be our mask that's gonna be animated. So we're gonna to go to File, Export, Export Image as PNG. You just wanna to browse to the location where you want this to go. And we'll call this one Mask Outline and click Save. Now we're gonna hide this one and bring this one up. We're gonna to go to File, Export, export as png and we're going to call this mask save it now we've got our masks created we need to make the stuff that's going to help us animate it. now we have our masks to animate them we're going to need some gradients or video loops now this is the easiest way to create cool subtle movement or crazy movement depending upon what you're going for and if you're going to use video for this any video you want to get 
you're gonna need to make sure it's a looping video to avoid odd jumps when it loops around. So let's create some gradients and I'll help you find those videos as well if that's the way you wanna go. Let's create a gradient first. So I'm gonna to go to File, New Image. We're gonna select 1920 by 1080 right here and we're gonna click Create. We're gonna go over here to our gradient tool and we're gonna select the sort of gradient that we want. So you have to decide what's going to look good with the colors that you want to use. In my case, I usually go blue to yellow. So we'll select there and we're going to go with a lighter blue, something like that. And over here, I'm going to select a pale yellow, something like that. And then we can just drag it out like this. And there we go. So we can bring it closer together kind of like this if we want to, to get a sharper transition in between the two. And I like to do that because I feel like it adds more animation and you'll see what I mean when you see how we animate this. So there we go, we've got a nice little transition. I'm just gonna go to File, Export, and we're gonna export an image as a PNG. And we're gonna call this Gradient and click Save. Boom, so now we've got our Gradient let me show you how to find a looping abstract video. So basically, I just typed in abstract looping video right here in Google. And once you get past all the sponsor BS up here at the top, you can find things like Pixel Bay and Pixels and this sort of stuff. So we're just going to go to Pixel Bay and you're going to find basically this. And I'm just going to select loop and then I'm going to look for something interesting. And I found this one. I really like it. I think this is probably going to work pretty cool. So all you have to do is select it and then click download, select 1920 by 1080 and download. Now I already got this one. So let's get another one just in case so you can see what, what these sorts of things do. That moves really fast. You may not want something that moves quite that fast or flashes quite that much. The whole plan is for this to not be too terribly distracting. This has some nice blue and yellow in it, which I think is really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that one. We're going to go to download and 1920 by 1080. Click download and it automatically will download it up here. And there we go. So now it just downloaded. Sometimes it takes a second or two, but it comes around. So now this is downloading. We're going to have two different videos that we could try out, see which ones work. But these videos loop so that we're not going to get at the end of it this weird cut break sort of thing. So now we have our videos and our gradient. All we have to do is animate our gradient so it can be used. In order to do that, we can use DaVinci Resolve or CapCut. We're just going to use DaVinci Resolve and I'm going to start an untitled project. We're going to go here and I'm going to go into here. We're going to drag our gradient over. And we're going to drag it down into our timeline. And we have to determine how long we want our rotation to be. The shorter the rotation is, the faster this is going to spin. So let's go ahead and make this clip 10 seconds. So it starts out at 5. We're going to add 5 more seconds. And there we go. And now all we have to do is add some keyframes. So we're going to come over here to our rotation angle. And we're going to add a keyframe to this. So we have to select it. And we go over here and add a keyframe and this puts a little spot at the beginning and we're going to go all the way to the end you can just click that and we're going to rotate it 360 degrees and there we go and you can see that it kind of doesn't rotate all the way so what we're going to do is we're going to move our little playhead nugget back just a little bit we're going to zoom in and make sure that it goes one frame before so right there. So now it spins, but you can see there's kind of a problem. We have all this black space on the edges and we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and zoom and we're going to keep spinning it around until we make sure that we get just the spinning. There we go. We get just the spinning and none of the, and none of the black space. Now we can, put this on and we can go ahead and click play and we just want to make sure that it rotates around without giving any kind of weird jump at the end and you can see this rotates perfectly smoothly so what we're going to do is click stop on here we're going to go to our export 
and we're gonna call this gradient spin. I'm gonna select our resolution, which is 1920 by 1080 right here in the YouTube section. I'm gonna browse to the location where I wanna save this, and we don't have any audio or anything, so we don't have to worry about anything else. We can add it to the render queue, render it out, and now we've got our animation video. Now, I work really hard to try to create content that I think you're going to enjoy. Sometimes I hit and sometimes I miss, but it's really hard to know for sure. That's where you can really help me out. If you're enjoying this video, leave it a thumbs up. And if it's not your cup of tea, it's perfectly fine to leave it a thumbs down. Now, if every single person watching this video right now leaves it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, I'm definitely gonna know if this is the kind of content that you enjoy. So thumbs up or thumbs down right now. Thank you so much for helping me out and let's get back to the video. Now all we have to do is animate this together and you're not going to believe how simple this is. All right, so we're gonna animate our masks. We're gonna use DaVinci Resolve again. We're gonna go ahead and select Untitled Project and we're gonna go over here and all we need to do is load in our video sources. So in this case, we have this video source here and we have this video source here and we have this source here. So we're gonna go ahead and start with our gradient. We're just gonna drag it down here. And we know it's already the length that we want, so we don't have to mess around with that. So what we're gonna do is go right here into Fusion. And we can select these and move them over a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is just drag our mask outline in here and then connect them up and boom. So now we have our mask outline. When we go over here, we can put our rotate on there. Then you can see our mask is animated. It looks absolutely fantastic. It's all ready to go. Very subtle, very cool. No jumping, no jitters. But if we wanna try out some of these videos that we got, what I'm gonna do is just right click on this one and we're gonna create a new timeline using the selected clip. Just adds it in down here. It's very simple. All we have to do is go back into Fusion once again. We can just move this over here and we'll drag in our mask outline and we'll just connect it up. And here we go. And so there we go. Now you can see what we get. Now that's a lot of flashing and animation. Maybe you don't want yours quite so flashy. Well, you can kind of tone that down. You can come out here, right click and go to change clip speed and we can just change this now I wouldn't recommend going much below 40 because it can get pretty choppy we want to ripple the timeline click change and there we go so now we've got a little bit slower animation I still think you kind of get a little bit of chop to it but when you consider how this is going to be used you may not actually notice it all that much so I'm going to leave it like that and we'll try this last one right here and we're just gonna right click and create a new timeline using the selected clips. And let me show you what these clips look like. That's a lot of flashing and stuff. This may look horrible. I'm gonna go ahead and slow the clip down. We're gonna go with, we'll go with 21. We'll go with 73% change. And let's see if we get any Well, we'll see how this works. We're gonna go over here and we're just gonna drag in our mask outline and we'll move this stuff over a little bit and connect our mask to our video and let's see how this looks still pretty flashy this is all a matter of the videos that you find but we're transforming these videos to the point where you don't have to really worry about anyone claiming the video or anything like that so now we're all set we've got three different ones that we can go ahead and export and see what we like and see what works so we'll start exporting this one. We're gonna go over here to the rocket ship and we're gonna name this one and we'll name it purple, yellow. That'll work. We're gonna select our location and then we're gonna come down here. We want quick time. We wanna go ahead and select uncompressed and then we wanna select BGRA 8-bit right here. We're gonna use export alpha. Our frame rate is 30 frames per second. It's perfect. That's exactly what we want. And all we have to do now is add this to the render queue. And you can see it right there. But we're going to export the other ones at the same time. So let's go back into our edit screen. 
and we'll select this timeline right here and we're gonna go ahead and click the rocket again and let's call this blue yellow and we don't need to change anything else BGRA 8-bit export alpha add to the render queue and we have one more we want to do our gradient so all we have to do is select timeline one that's our gradient and we'll just click our rocket ship here we'll call this gradient mask animation just so we know for sure that we're getting the right one everything else can stay the same bgra 30 frames add to render queue render and it rendered this one we can select these two at the same time just by hitting shift and holding the other one and render those two as well now we're all rendered up i just like to make these as small as possible to do that i'm going to use the shutter encoder so if we go in here and we go and we look at the details on these we're going to be able to see that they're, they're kind of on the bigger side. They don't need to be quite that big. So we're gonna be able to fix that. All we have to do is let's drag blue yellow and we're gonna add our gradient mask animation and we're gonna add purple yellow. We're gonna toss those in here. We're gonna drop this down and we're gonna select VP9. And then what we're gonna do is go over here to our advanced features and we're going to enable alpha channel and then all we have to do is make sure all three of these are selected and click start function now it's going to run all three of those through the function and make much smaller files that are going to be webm files now you can definitely see how much smaller these files are than their counterparts but i want to take it a step further to make them easier to identify when we get into obs so i'm just going to go ahead and add a w at the beginning of them so that it's easy for me to be able to tell which one is the webm file when we get into OBS. Now all we have to do is put it all together in OBS. All right, so here we are with a blank profile and a blank scene, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click the plus. And all we have to do is load in our media source for the first piece. We'll call this outline and click okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and browse. And let's go ahead and start with our gradient mask. Click open, and we just wanna loop it and click okay. And there we go. So there's our gradient mask. Now what we're gonna do is load a camera in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select a video capture device. Call this cam and click okay. And there we go. I'm just gonna select my audio device right here. Make sure we have the proper one. There we go. So now we've got a camera in here. All I have to do is right click on this camera and go to filters and I'm gonna click the plus and we're gonna go to image mask blend, click okay. And I'm gonna drop this down, select alpha channel, browse to our mask. In this case, we are just going to use our mask click open and there we go so now we have everything we need that's what our mask is going to look like we can go ahead and create a new scene and click plus and we're going to go to our scene and we're just going to add our original scene there and now we could take this and move it around any way we want and if we want to change our outline to one of our other masks we can go into scene we can select our outline right click go to properties and we'll just change this let's go with our blue and yellow one see what that looks like just again make sure it's looped and there we go so now we can go in here and we could see what that looks like and we could try our last one by going into properties selecting this and we'll go with the purple and yellow click OK and OK and there is our purple and yellow one Lots of animation on these if that's what you want. I think this effect is cool and this takes literally 10 minutes to create all kinds of different shapes. See what you like. And all you have to do is find the right video or use the right gradient to give the kind of motion and activity that you're looking for. And you can pretty much do whatever you want. It looks awesome. It really doesn't get any easier than that. If there's something you didn't understand, please don't hesitate to ask the question right down below in the comments. And if you wanna see how you can clone your camera so you can use multiple masks in your live stream, you should check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel, it's totally free. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.